going. Very good. Who got the first one? Just talk to the, about the default, just how cool it felt in terms of, I think you felt like you were back, but how cool it was to be back. Yeah, um, I mean, that wasn't my first one. The first one was that out route. Uh, so I got that one. I felt like I could have made a better move, but I was really just trying to secure it. That was the first time I seen a ball in live action in a while. So um, secured the catch and tried to get as much as I could. But uh, on the deep shot, uh, it was good, man. It felt really good. I haven't caught in a deep ball in a, in a while either. So it felt good to connect on that, and um, I'm happy with the way the game went. How hard is it? They always say next man up mentality, but yeah. that's you know, easier said than done when you're – not get your shot and now you then you finally get your shot what's it been like for you yeah i mean i i honestly think it's all part of god's plan because all last year i was being told that it's next man up mentality next man up mentality and it never really got to that point and i got really frustrated about it um so i felt like that conditioned me for the position i was in coming here and uh just trying to stay patient man and just trusting in god's plan and Whenever I got my opportunity, I wanted to, to maximize it, and um, I was able to do that on Sunday. What does it feel like when you are that next man up and then your number finally does get called? Yeah, I think it's um, just still trying to stay in tune with everything because there's so many different little adjustments uh, that are made throughout the week. And um, I feel like if you're, if you're down in the dumps about being the next man up, you're not really getting those different tweaks. And then you never know what can happen in this game. In the blink of an eye, you could be – up and playing and uh, you know I was going in that game expecting just to, to back people up and uh, found myself out there the whole game so uh, that's how quick things can happen and uh, you just got to know that. You mentioned uh, in uh, you know OPA's training and stuff like that and it was hot right? oh, and, yeah. uh, against Philly it was a scorcher so yeah, how was that for and then when you had to come in and, and play you know. <laughs> hey. how that Let me tell you I think I had the most yards out of everybody on the team. And it was the hottest day I've been been involved with out here, and it, it was tough. It was tough, but uh, it was a couple of times in the huddle I was getting dizzy. But I just tried to power through it, and um, I feel like I've done a good job of keeping my body up to shape and uh, being ready for everything. I don't think so. I mean, I just got off the phone with my mom, and I was talking about how he just puts the ball in the money, and it's it's such a catchable ball. Um, you know, it reminds me of the old days. But uh, yeah, I mean, he gets in that rhythm, and uh, he gets everybody else going too. So yeah. You, know. you guys go up against the Falcons this weekend. They've got what is known as a defensive head coach. What changes? Yeah. When? What do you expect from a team that has a head coach that has a defensive background? To be honest, I don't think really focused on what they're doing. I think it's it's really on us, and that's every week. Uh, regardless of who we're playing, we got to focus on ourselves and um, executing what, what game plan we have. Uh, I feel like if everybody's on the same page, um, it doesn't really matter what they're playing. We have answers for everything. We just have to be on point with what we're doing. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll start. What was the key to all, you know, both sides of the ball play great, but especially the defense? What was, what was the last one? I'd say, I mean, we just put a lot of emphasis on starting fast and coming out there as a team, everybody doing their individual jobs, focusing on the small details, third down, red zone, drive starters, things like that. Everybody was locked in. And what kind of challenge do you think this Falcons offense is going to bring? They have a lot of weapons, you know, Mooney, London, both backs, and Pitts. So everybody has to do a good job of, just like we did last week, playing their individual job because they can throw the ball anywhere. Anybody can make a play, so everybody's got to be locked in. Zion, this is a divisional game. You guys are in first place. It's another opportunity to extend that lead. A lot of discussion in the offseason about who's the favorite and things like that with who's Atlanta made. Is this a game like you don't even need that extra motivation because it's kind of already built in? Oh, yeah, definitely don't need any motivation for this one, especially in our division. It's so competitive. I feel like we have a rivalry with all three teams in our division, and especially a game versus Atlanta this early in Atlanta on Thursday. You know, it's already hyped up enough. We don't need to hype it up ourselves. You know, it's kind of given.
What, how do you balance, you know, kind of staying level-headed coming off such a big win on Sunday? We saw it happen after Detroit with the Denver game, so how do you kind of, like, just keep everything even good and not fall into that same trap again? Yeah, I mean, like that Denver loss, like I said, I bottled up that feeling. And so anytime I feel good or coming off of a win, I just go into my cabin to take a sip and uh, am reminded about how bad that felt to lose versus Denver. And so everybody in this locker room is going to be sipping all week to make sure we stay locked in. What was it like on Sunday uh, going up against uh, not only the Eagles, but your brother Tristan? Tristan ended up with more tackles. Did you guys kind of have a bet going on? <laughs> we didn't have a bet going into it. I know he didn't go into it thinking he was going to play as much defense as he did, but it was amazing seeing him out there. I mean, I was on the bench and I kind of looked up because I heard his name getting called. It's like, what defense is out there? So one of their safeties must have went down and I see him out there and I was just hyped for him. I was happy. Someone behind me said, hey, Zion, tell your brother to chill out a little bit. Were you telling him that same afterwards too? I mean, he was flying down, like going after our guy's knees and stuff. I was like, bro, if you hurt one of our players, I might have to hurt you. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. All right, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Peter, ultimately, how did you feel? You missed a couple weeks and then you came out and made such a big impact and then you got out the sacks and you got everybody going. It it was definitely hard sitting out one week and then uh, especially losing, it makes it even harder. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, I think that was just not only me, but a testament to everybody (laughs) and uh, just taking the coaching that. We got to go out there and, you know, uh, create pressures and, you know, get sacks and help out the, our back end and, uh, in, that, in that regard. So I think that was just not only me being back, but I think everybody else being hungry to, to get in the backfield as well. How key is going to be pressuring Kirk Cousins this week going to be to win the game because of all the weapons they have both in the backfield and outside? I think it's going to be a big key for us, but I think another big key is just Trying to be able to stop their uh, run game. You know, they got two running backs that are are uh, definitely hard to stop. Um, that you know, they both have different um, abilities that 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 can really hurt a team. So um, I think it's just a combination of everything trying to get after. Them. Is that just what makes their offense so difficult or so dangerous? The fact that they do have so many weapons. Yeah, they do have a lot of weapons, and you know, the, from the tight end room to running backs and even receivers and stuff like that. And now having a new quarterback in, uh, um, a veteran quarterback in that's, uh, that's able to lead that offense, it makes it even much more of a challenge for us. So uh, we just got to lock in and focus on our game plan this week. Yes, I haven't played a divisional game yet, and now the first one against one of the teams is really going to be battling for the division title, presumably. It's a Thursday night game. How, how much does that compress the intensity of all this preparation? Um, the good thing is that it's still early on in the season, and I think is uh, that's one one of the big things that they harp on is um, to get to the playoffs. The easiest way to get there is to win your division. So it's definitely a big game this week, especially with the Falcons and, and how tough the team they are this year. And, uh, you know, we struggled with them in the past, so it's it's definitely a big challenge and a big, a big um, yeah, definitely a big challenge for us this week to get over this hump and uh, try to try to get this win. Pete, I don't know. There's been a hotter day to play than you guys played on Sunday, and for, for the big guys like yourself, uh, how how was that stamina able to, able to continue with uh, these guys? Um, it was definitely hot, but I think all the, the days that we practiced outside and uh, all those hot days during camp and stuff like that pay off. Mm-hmm. I think we get used to it, and then um, so I think it definitely makes it tougher on other teams coming in and having to play in that heat, mm-hmm. uh, especially with with teams like last week with the Eagles that came in and probably not that hot in Philly. Right. So um, it was definitely helped us out um, out there, but it was definitely hot for us, but something that we get used to. And, uh, it's, uh, it's actually, for some reason, I feel like practice is hotter because we're <laughs> sure. trying to stop moving. I think in the game we get take a break for a little bit, sit on the bench, and it cools us off. So the offense stayed on the field a while. That helped. They were on the field for a while, so <laughs> I think they were more hot than we were. Do you consider yourself a fast healer? I remember you got carted off against Washington with the knee injury, and you came back and played the next week. You were only out game and a half. Your knee injury this time. What is it about you and your healing ability? 
<laughs> I think it's just uh, everything that goes into it, from what I do in the training room to what I do in the weight room, and then uh, what I do from when I'm away from here. I think it just uh, goes down to everything I do, is just locking in on on everything, on, on rehab, on training, on how I eat, uh, supplements I take that, that, uh, that help out and stuff like that. Just having a good team around me that, that's able to guide me in the right direction. And I think um, it's just like the want to want to play. So I like use the motivation of not being out there with the guys. So I think that's the main motivation to, to try to get back out there. And, I think that's what the main drive is. I don't think it's a really fast healer. I think some things are, it was what, two to two to four weeks to be out. It was like the norm is two to, two to four weeks, but I'm not trying to be normal around here. Vita, there was a clip of you uh, Sunday. You were getting triple teamed. How often does that happen, or at least against the Eagles? Do you need a guesstimate how many times you got triple teamed? I think that just happened. I don't think it was okay. a true triple team. Okay. I think the back, because KJ was right behind me, so I think the back was was a uh, eye on KJ. So it, they, when you pause it in a certain in a certain part of the film, it looks like I'm getting triple team, but mm -hmm. I'm really not. Okay. Anything else?